Welcome to part two of my 3D trailer title series. We're talking about this trailer title that I made for one of my latest projects, and you can use any of these techniques in your motion graphics projects. Today, we're going to be talking exclusively about Unreal Engine 5, so let's get to it. So we're in Unreal Engine now, and we have to make sure there's a couple plugins enabled. First, we'll go to our settings in the top right-hand corner and click on Plugins. We'll type Movie Render Queue. We want to make sure that the Movie Render Queue and additional passes in it is enabled. We're not going to do any additional passes today, but I highly recommend it. Next, we're going to look up C4D and make sure that the Cinema 4D Datasmith importer is on. You will have to restart Unreal, which is why I have this little notification down here. So let's just restart. After your project is restarted, we can right click and start adding a couple more things. First, I'm gonna go to miscellaneous in the content browser and add an open color IO configuration. We'll rename this OCIO. Double click on that. This window will pop up. We're gonna click on our configuration file and I'm gonna leave a description on how to do all of this in the description down below, but you will need to download an OCIO config. Find that on your computer and find the necessary config file. Now I will say if you don't wanna render in an ACES color space or anything like that, you do not need to do that part. All right, next what we need to do is open up that OCIO once again, add a couple of indexes. First, we're gonna add a utility linear sRGB and then an output rec 709 and then for my own checking sake, slog3 and an aces CG. Save. All right. Next, we can finally import our Cinema 4D file. So go to the little cube and plus and Datasmith file import. And we're gonna navigate to the Cinema 4D file that we saved for this project. So I have this here and I was doing some stuff on the back end just to tighten it up a little bit. Not much has changed on the visual side. So all these settings are basically saying, do we want to bring in our geometry, textures, lights, cameras, animations? We want to make sure all of this is checked. Click import and it'll take a second and we will notice that there's a bunch of new stuff in our outliner. Now this big platform, we don't need it. Let's get rid of it. Delete. If we zoom in around our viewport, right click and WASD can move us around. We can see that we have a camera and our logo. Now there's still this little logo stuff. We do not need that because that is just our backup. So we can find all of that in our outliner and just delete. Do not need yes to all. All right, so now we want to double check our animation. So let's double check on the animations folder right here that was created in your project. And you'll see a little clapboard here. Double click that and we can see that there's a bunch of keyframes. And where'd our camera go? Well, if we click on the lock camera to selected viewport button here, we can see and if we scrub through, hey, look, there's a really cool looking camera animation. Awesome. Now there is a little default setting that Cinema 4D likes to do, and we're just gonna make sure we turn this off. If you leave it on, it will mess up your render. So turn it off, check out this video for a more detailed explanation. Turn that off. All right, now we need to liven this up a little bit. First, what we're gonna do is we're going to add some materials to our text. So we'll select all of our geometry, the little cinder blocks in our outliner, and then we will go to our content browser. Now, do you remember the starter content that I mentioned earlier? Well, within there, there's a very useful set of materials that we can use. These aren't the best materials and it's not the biggest library, but it's a good place to get you started. So we'll find this copper one that I like, and I'm gonna just drag this on to all of the elements in our material window in the lower right-hand corner. So drop, and drop and drop and that looks pretty cool now we got that cool little 
copper material texture we can leave our camera and hold right click and zoom in if the viewport is going too fast for you you can go to the top right hand corner of your viewport and change the camera speed i'll bring it down to one and if we zoom in on that text it is doing a uh, cool looking copper material if you do get too close the clipping is a little high but we'll talk about that in another tutorial so now we have to do a couple things to our sequencer to make sure that we can render this out correctly first we're going to go to track and then we're going to add a camera cut track then on this new thing that was just added to our sequence we're going to click on camera and add the camera in our scene now we can see the in and out point it's just like adobe premiere or davinci resolve we can scooch this out and make sure it encompasses our in and out points which is indicated by the green and red points there so from here we could theoretically render this out but it's not lively enough we want to make this look pretty so how do we do that first let's go to our place actors panel up here if you don't have this panel if you click on the cube plus sign you'll see this panel right here select that and you'll see this window in the place actors panel we'll look up post process volume drag that in and then what we're going to do is we're going to change a couple things in here first in the search bar of our post process volume we'll search up a unb and that's going to make this post process volume affect everything in the scene so now we can clear that search and we're going to scroll through i do like adding some bloom so we'll turn on bloom we'll turn on the intensity and then set this to convolution that's just a more natural looking bloom Next, we'll go to exposure, go to exposure compensation, and then the min and max. First, we'll set the exposure from auto histogram to basic, and then we'll set the min and max to one. Cool. So now it's looking a little dark. We could either bring up the exposure compensation or we could add more light to the scene. For now, I'm not going to worry about the lighting because I want to add a couple more things in our post-process volume. Let's close these windows, scroll down, get rid of the color grading, get rid of the film. We want to go to the global illumination and set it to either ray tracing or lumen. Let's stick with lumen for now because that is technically faster, but we might switch it to ray tracing later on. Same thing with reflections. Turn that on and lumen is fine. Now the lighting is not doing this justice. So first I want to make sure that we clear out the background. I don't want anything. I want the logo to stand out. So first I'm going to go to my content browser, go to my content, and I'm going to right click and make a new folder. And I'll call this materials, double click, right click, and then I'm going to add a new material. We'll call this black material. And I just want something that's going to be pure black. It's going to be our background. So we'll double click on our material and then we'll hit three on the keyboard that will add a color node. And it's just these three numbers that make up a color. So we can drag that onto our base color. It's going to be black. Then we'll hold one on the keyboard and this will make a number. And this is just a constant value. We can add this to the specular and add this to the roughness. So add one more there. And that is what I want something pure black now what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on the first node convert to parameter i'll call this color i'll right click on the second node i'll call this specular and i'll right click on the third node and i'll call this roughness Ooh. and then i will close this after i save it once that's saved we can close it and then we will right click on that black material and click on create material instance. So I'll make a procedural copy of it for later. In our place actors panel, we'll clear out the search. We'll go to our basic shapes and we'll add a plane and we will zero this out. So we'll scroll up to the properties of our plane in the transform. We'll hit the little reset arrow right here. And then we're going to rotate it. So we'll hit E on the keyboard and then bring it down so we're getting the background there make sure it's at 90 and we'll set the scale to 
10, 10, 10. We'll add the black material instance onto that. And then we're gonna leave our camera by unchecking the lock viewport button there. I just want to push this back in the scene just a little bit. Cool. In fact, I think this is still a little too small. I'm gonna set this to 20, 20, 20. Cool. All right, so now if we click on perspective and then camera, we can see through our camera, it's still falling a little flat. We need to light our logo now. This is where it starts to get fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the lights section of our place actors panel, and we're gonna add a rectangular light. This is my favorite light for stuff like this because it allows you to really paint light around the scene. So we're gonna click on the little eject button from the camera and we can see that our light is illuminating a little bit of our scene. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this just above, in fact, directly above, boop, set the X to zero. And then I'm gonna make it much wider. Actually, I'm gonna make it much taller. I just want it covering the entire top of it. Now at this point, it is a little subjective and I'm deviating from what I did for the main logo animation just a little bit, but we're trying to just get the point across here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a light to my background. So I'll hit Control D and add another rectangular light and I'll zero out to position. And I am going to move this around until it is gonna hit the background. Now, the only downside is that the material is very, very dark, very, very black. So what I can do is I can go in and I can change the roughness and the specular just a touch, 0.05 so it'll actually accept some light. And I'm gonna crank the roughness up by a lot, and then the specular up. So it just accepts a little bit of light, not a ton. So I'll scooch that over to my other monitor really quick. And I'm gonna look through my camera. I'll call this second rectangular light, select it and just call it BG light. And I'll bring this down and I will push it back in Z space and Y space because that's how Unreal works actually. And I'll scooch it down so it's just out of frame. Once it's out of frame, I'm going to make the width much bigger or the height much bigger and I'm going to increase the intensity. And I'm basically just trying to add a little bit of gradient under it. And I'm gonna set this to a nice red color. In fact, I'll just color pick from the logo right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to that BG light and crank up the intensity. So we get a little bit of a gradient, maybe 250 and crank up the attenuation. That looks pretty cool. I'm very happy with that thus far. So now what I can do is I can go to my top light we'll call this logo light and I will add a touch of intensity. Maybe bring up the attenuation. I'm gonna add some barn doors. So if I eject from my camera here and I change the length, it'll make the bounding box of the light wider, but then if I change the angle, it'll only focus the light on the logo. And if I look through my camera one more time, that does look pretty cool. Now, the only thing I do wanna change is I wanna add another logo light. So I'll select that in my outliner and hit Control D. And it does this weird thing when you duplicate it. So we'll just zero it out on the X and then we will scooch it down on the Z and we're gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna bring the intensity down by a lot. I just want to add a little bit of fill under it. So if I go to my sequencer and I just scrub through, it'll reset my camera. And I want 
this light to just kiss the bottom. So right now it's really filling in all those shadows. I want it to be so subtle, so like 0.2 and just a little bit. And I'll add even a touch of color to it. I'll color pick that red once again, so it looks a little bit more epic. That looks pretty cool. I'm stoked with that. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to go to that background light and actually scooch it down so it's completely out of frame. I'm going to increase the intensity just a little bit to compensate for that move. Let me just, yeah, let's just crank it up even more. Boop. That looks really sweet. Now, there is one thing I do want to add, and that's some extra specular highlights to this. So I'm going to go to one of my letters, and I'm going to double click on that copper. And I can see here in the material that it's very cumbersome and a little intimidating because there's all these nodes. And I don't want you to be afraid of nodes right away. There's a link in the description down below on how to deal with materials in Unreal Engine. But long story short, all I want to do is I want to change this roughness. Right now, I feel it's a little high, so I'm going to set the bottom value here to, like, say, 0.1, and that should make it a little bit shinier. Save that, and that does add a touch more specular highlights. Now, I'll go to that post-process volume, and I'll just try turning this on to ray tracing just to see what happens and see if it gives me a better look. And I'm not particularly thrilled with that look, so you know what? I'll keep that the same. But what I am going to do is I'm going to add one more light. And that's going to be a rectangular light. I'm going to make it really small. And I'll call this specular light. Boop. Boop. And I'll scooch this around. And I'll make sure that I select all my lights really quick. Boop, boop. And there's one thing that you do always want to do with your lights, especially if you're working in visual effects and motion graphics, just set it to movable. There's definitely some exceptions to that, but for a lot of the simple stuff that you can do in Unreal, you want to set this stuff to movable. All right, so with this little specular light, I'm going to make it much smaller. And I'm going to set the Z position where it is in space there i'm going to scooch it away and i'm going to do something fun if you've seen any of the visual effects on star wars or the titles for the star wars on disney plus you can see that they do a little cheeky thing that i'm very fond of so we're going to add an actor to the outliner and we're going to zero it out then what we're going to do is we're going to add a name to this actor so we'll hit f2 and we'll call this light rotation. Oop. And we will drag this into our sequencer. Then we're going to take that specular light and put it under the light rotation. So now if I were to move that, we get this really cool looking specular highlight. If you look right there, boop, 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 boop. So let's play back that first little animation and see how that looks. And we get those cool little speculars around there. Now, the reason why I'm adding these intermediate keyframes is because of the way Unreal Engine interprets rotation data like this. Otherwise, it will kind of freak out and go all over the place. So we're going to just go forward maybe another like 60 frames and then scooch it maybe like 30 degrees, add a keyframe, go forward and then add another keyframe there. And now it should, we can see here that it's doing this weird little hiccup right there. So we're gonna take this and scooch them in just a little bit more. You can see if we select those curves, it's doing a weird thing. We don't like that. So instead, we're going to delete those. 
and just drag this curve down. There we go. That's what we want. So now if we go through our camera, camera, play that back. That looks super cool. Now there's a couple issues with this lighting right now. And that is because the logo background is actually accepting that specular light. And I actually don't want that to happen. I want it to just hit the type. So I'm going to select all of the blood rune letters and I'm going to scroll down to my lighting, light mass settings, advanced, and I'm going to find my lighting channels. I'm going to turn on channel one. Then I'm going to go to that specular light and I'm going to go to my channels and I can search that. And I'm going to turn off zero and then turn on one. So now that specular light is only hitting the logo, which is super cool. Next, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the lens flares are not too crazy. So I'll select the post process volume here and I will go to my lens flare property, turn on the intensity, turn on the bokeh size, and I'm going to crank this value up to like 30. So now those lens flares, if any, will just be very, very subtle. Now there's obviously some stuff appearing in our viewport, like the light controls. If we hit G on the keyboard, that'll turn it off. We can see what that looks like. Cool. Now I'm not a huge fan of the way the light is rotating right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my light rotation, go to my curves. I'm going to go to the end of my timeline and I'm just going to scooch that keyframe way out there and then select that. And I'm actually going to make it linear so I can select all of my keyframes here and hit linear. So now if I play that back, be a little bit more subtle. Now I am realizing one little thing and that's the blood rune rune text is actually a touch too far to the right. So I'm going to turn off my snapping by clicking on these buttons and just scooch it over just a smudge. Just like that. That looks pretty cool. So I'm really happy with the way th this logo looks thus far. It looks cool. It looks epic. I want to make sure that this is all looking good by watching it one more time. I make sure that I turn off lock to display rate at runtime, and I think we're good to go. So now we need to get ready to render this. First off, what I do want to do is check the OCIO. So I'm going to enable display. Then I'm going to go to lit OCIO display. Make sure I select the OCIO asset. I'm going to select Utility Linear sRGB and Output Rec 709. And it's going to change the color just a touch, but this is generally what it will look like when I'm viewing in like a video format environment. And you know what? That looks fine. We're going to be rendering this in Aces CG, and it would look like this. Do not work in Aces CG. Or if you want to work in a log profile where you can get more color grading opportunities in post, you can do that, but work in Rec. 709 output in ACES CG is a good starting point. So we're going to go to window cinematics, movie render queue. We're going to look for that sequence and we'll select that there. Now, if you want to learn more about render settings in Unreal Engine, check out this video. I'm going to blaze through this really quick. So I'm going to get rid of my JPEG sequence. I'm going to set this to an EXR. I'm going to set the compression to DWAB. Next, I'm going to add some console variables. I'm going to add game overrides. I'm going to add anti-aliasing and color output. And that is everything that I want. First, in the anti-aliasing, I'm going to set the spatial count to four, and then the temporal count to four. Check override anti-aliasing and no anti-aliasing. Color output, Select MISC. Output for the OCIO is enabled. 
And then for the config, I'm going to select the OCIO config and then choose the color space linear sRGB. And then the output is going to be ACES CG. Now, what we're going to do is add some console variables. I'm not going to go too crazy into this one. I'm going to add my favorite one, r.screen percentage 200. And then pro little hack. If you go to this console command down here, you can type r.depth of field or any other console command, and you can use that to copy. And the reason why I do this is because the casing is very, very important. If you don't have the correct casing like capital D capital O it won't work so depth of field quality is important and our motion blur quality copy that add one and set that to four accept cool and then I need to make sure I set my output space. So I want this to be pre-renders. Go to my new folder, UE5 underscore blood room logo tutorial. Double click that, put it in there, set it to 3840. Set it to 3840 by 2160. And then in my console variables, screen percentage 200%. Yep, that all looks good. Everything looks good to me. This is when we can start the render sequence. So I hit accept and then we are good to go. So we can hit render local and then it will go off and do its thing. So now this is rendering. I'm gonna take a break go make a snack and this will be done in just a little bit again just a reminder that if you add more samples if you use the screen percentage console variable your render time will go up by a lot but this is still probably pretty fast relative to doing something in redshift or octane or whatever else i realized that we talked a lot about many concepts in unreal engine 5 so if you have any questions on anything in particular let me know in the comment section down below and i will make a tutorial specifically for you on said concepts at some point with that out of the way i hope you learned something if you did awesome hit that like button it lets me know that i'm making content that is valuable to you and the algorithm hit that subscribe button and you can join the party and learn more motion graphics things on unreal engine after effects cinema 4d from me and I will leave you with one final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some... Goodbye, my friends. Bye!